This is the Emergency Medical Minute. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. Um, so I was going to talk about a withdrawal syndrome, not benzos or alcohol or opiates, which we're unfortunately too familiar with. Um, but one, uh, certainly to consider, especially in a certain subset of population, um, that's baclofen withdrawal. Uh, and the reason being is that if you don't think about it, you're really probably not going to fix the problem. Um, and it can be quite serious. So, uh, baclofen inhibits, uh, neurotransmission at GABA receptors is used with muscle spasms, but also in people with spasticity. So like spinal cord patients that we see often at Craig, um, sometimes patients that have multiple sclerosis, uh, and it's delivered in one of two ways, either orally through pills or intrathecally through a pump. Um, and it's in that latter population that you're probably going to see it. Uh, and that tends to be the spinal cord patients. So it's not too infrequently that we might see someone from Craig in particular. Um, so just something to keep in the back of your head, because what happens is if you have a, so that's delivered intrathecally, if you have an abrupt cessation, you of the baclofen, about a day or three days later, people start to get altered, um, really rigid, febrile, and can look quite sick. Uh, obviously gonna look maybe like sepsis or serotonin syndrome. Uh, so as you're working them up appropriately. So for those conditions, just something to keep in your back of your mind, because um, the only way to fix it is to give them baclofen back. And you can only give it to one of two ways, right, orally, intrathecally, and it's really hard to get enough to them orally. So until you find out what the problem is, like with that pump, you're not gonna really get them back to their baseline and fix the problem. Um, and so that could be as simple as uh, it ran dry because it got a little reservoir, it broke, the batteries failed, something like that. So it could be as easy as filling it up and potentially if someone could even go home or talking to usually a neurosurgeon to have it replaced or otherwise fixed. So just something to keep in the back of your head when you have that right patient and they're looking quite sick to see, hmm, could this be back of withdrawal? So that's that. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.